Now let's quickly shift gear to DHCP. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. The whole reason we have DHCP is it automatically assigns IP addresses to endpoints connected to the wired or wireless network. I don't know about you, but I don't like doing anything manually, right? And especially if you have a ton of workstations and IP phones and wireless devices, it's insanity to manually assign anything. That's where DHCP comes in. As soon as you have those devices come and join the network, they get plugged in or connect wirelessly, they automatically get their IP information. Now, DHCP server automatically provides the following information to each DHCP client, whether it's a laptop, a desktop, wired, wireless, IP phone, regardless, this is the information each device gets. Gets an IP address, gets a subnet mask, gets a default gateway IP address, which we just finished talking about. Typically, that's our first hop redundancy protocol virtual IP. We just talked about it, so it's very timely. And it also provides DNS server IP addresses. Typically, you would have redundant IP addresses. And here's how it looks. So I took a snapshot of my laptop here. And as you can see here, it's configured via DHCP. It's picking up its IP automatically, subnet mask. Uh, the router in this case is the default gateway that we just talked about, right? Which is a virtual IP. And the DNS server in this case is the Google DNS servers that are specified. These are Google public DNS servers to be exact. Now, here are some DHCP server features that we can configure when we're on the DHCP server, we can define a, an address pool. So that is basically a subnet, which is a range of IPs. On the DHCP server, we can define reserved addresses. So basically this is a list of excluded IPs and I'll show you on the CLI how that works. Address binding, we can also do that on the server meaning we can have what's called a MAC reservation, meaning a manually defined IP address MAC to a MAC address. Now, why in the world would you wanna do that? So think about it, like at home, for example, for me, I have address binding set up for my network attached storage or NAS server, and I've also got an IP printer. I've, I've got a network printer that I print to and I've also done the same thing. I have a MAC address reserved for my printer. And this ensures that the IP address never changes. No matter how many times I reboot those devices, they always get the same IP address. Why is that important? Well, the rest of the devices in the network that need access to these services like the NAS server or the printer that I have, they point to those devices. And as long as the IP address doesn't change, they can always continue pointing to those devices. And another thing we can configure on the DHCP server is what's called a lease time. Now, whenever you get an IP address from a DHCP server, it's leased to you as the client, meaning you're not handed that IP address for eternity. There's a certain expiration date on that IP address after which it just goes away. But if you needed to keep that IP, we can renew the lease. And by the way, this is not an exhaustive list of features on the DHCP server we can configure. This is just a very small yet important feature list that I wanted to share with you. Now let's quickly look at how DHCP works and the Dora process. So here's Bob, he has a laptop, he physically connects to the switch and we've got a server that's also plugged into the same switch. So how does Bob's PC or laptop gets an automatic IP address on the DHCP server? So first what happens is Bob's PC sends what's called a discover broadcast and it's sent to the DHCP server through the switch, which switch basically forwards as all Fs when it comes to the MAC address at layer two. And we all know what all Fs at layer two means. 
it's a layer two broadcast. All the devices will get it. Only the device that understands that packet uses it, everybody else drops it. Now in this case, DHCP server gets that discover request and it's able to determine that it's intended for the DHCP server because it's coming from the source of all zeros. The DHCP server then responds back with an offer to Bob. And the reason DHCP server is able to respond back to Bob and not any other PC is because it's got the MAC address in the initial discover. So it responds back to that MAC with an offer and inside of that offer, and if you were to zoom into that offer packet, what we'll see is an IP address and a lease time. Bob gets it. Bob then sends a request to the DHCP server saying, I like your offer and I would like to accept your offer and here's my request. Finally, the DHCP server responds back with an acknowledgement leasing that IP to Bob and now Bob is good to go. And this is where the acronym DORA comes in. Discover, Offer, Request, Acknowledgement. It's the first letter in all of these different packet types. If you combine that together, that's called DORA. So that's the easiest way to remember from an exam perspective because this could very well be an exam question. Now, by default, what ends up happening is Bob is gonna get an IP from the DHCP server, no problem, because switches can send broadcasts all day long as long as they're layer two switches, right? Well, we gotta, what if we have a layer three device in the middle? Like which we do in this case. Well, what do routers do when they get a broadcast? Routers hate broadcast they drop it. So the router is gonna drop that broadcast and if Leah down below wanted to get an IP address from the DHCP server, the packets will never make it through. The packets will always get dropped right here. As soon as the packets are received at this interface on the router, they'll get dropped. So how do we fix that problem? This is where DHCP relay agent comes in. So what we do is we set up a DHCP relay agent on this interface pointing toward the DHCP clients and when the DHCP clients respond or send a discover broadcast, that discover broadcast is received on this interface and it's transparently then passed along to the rest of the network until it gets to the DHCP server and the DHCP server consequently is then able to respond back to that device that sent the initial request for the IP address. And that's how DHCP Relay Agent works. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.